Hey guys, it's been a while since I've uh, made a video tutorial and I've kind of finished the other series. I just wanted to make a few tutorials to get people to understand the basics and then they could go off and learn on their own to really expand their understanding and do things that they want to do with those apps. So I'm sorry, I'm probably not going to make any more tutorials for the iOS application one. Maybe a few more if I have some free time, but as you can see, I've got something that looks like a really <laughs> basic game here, which I've been fooling around with. I made it a few weeks ago, and I've just been playing around with the iOS sprite kit. So I want to show you guys how to make a basic side-scroller game. And um, you could do a platformer, too, based on what I'm going to show you guys over the next few tutorials. But I just decided to go with a little simple Flappy Bird clone. So I'll just show you what my app does. I, as you can see, there's a lot of blank space up here. It's because I originally made it for the phone I have, I, I develop it on my actual phone, and it's an iPhone 4, but the Retina's got a lot more space. So we click New Game, and then just got a little plane that flies through some hoops. And once you fly through it, you get points, and then if you hit the hoop, you lose. And that's kind of how it goes. So we're just going to, I'm going to show you guys how to create this. And the first thing we got to do is make a new project. going to go up to application, click Sprite Kit Game. You can name it whatever you want. Oh, that's weird. Um, we'll name it First Game. Alright, I just skipped over um, me entering the little mundane things for the project and here we are when we first open our game. It'll be closed, we open it. If we go over here to My Scene, We'll see a few things. Uh, it's also come with a view controller, main storyboard. We're not going to touch the main storyboard. Oh, it's going to load though. Sorry, don't have the fastest computer. I'll probably skip this too. All right, but let's just go and click run and see what happens. Because um, what Apple does is they made a really, really, really bare bones, if you even want to call it a game. And it's just to kind of show the basic capabilities of the sprite kit. And it honestly, if you guys just take a look at this code, you could figure out what most of it did, and <laughs> you wouldn't even need me for much. But let's have this load up, and we'll see what it does. All right, guys, so as you can see, all it says right here is hello world, and on the bottom it'll say one node, 60 FPS, and the node is really, it's just this label, that's one node on this entire canvas that it has, and if you click, uh, it's got this little spaceship that spins around, and I can't tell if it just spins. Yeah, it just spins. I think it might scale down a bit too, but actually we could just go back here and look at it. What happens is it calls this my scene and it initializes it with a size and the size it initializes it with is itself. It goes super in it with size, size. And then it sets the background color to this specific color right here, which is this kind of this dark blue. And then my label is the node and that's the one node that we see on there and it gives it a font right here so that's why it's that kind of interesting font and then you could see that just sets the text font size and position and at the very end every time you do this when you're programming for the sprite kit you're going to be adding nodes to your screen and what you have to do at the end because you always you might see yourself uh, doing all this stuff and then you're like why is it not showing up in my game and it's because you forget to add the child to the parent and after that it returns itself and that's what that method has to do but then when we click we get all these spaceships and as you can see the more I click the lower the FPS gets and that's just because it's doing stuff with all these nodes and it says for you I touch and touches every time I touch it basically it gets the location creates a new sprite it sets the position to that and then it has it do this SK action it actually just creates it right here. SK action, rotate by angle, pi, for one second. So every second it goes half, is it half or full? Yeah, every second it goes half a circle because the circle is 2 pi. And then at the end, after it creates this action, it tells this sprite we just made to run the action, SK action, repeat forever, this guy, and then it adds it. And here's update, it's not used yet, but we will use it. So uh, I think I still got a little time in this tutorial after breaking it down. We are going to add a few 
variables and um, some code to this. So let's start with implementation. We're going to give a few instance variables. SK node underscore BG layer, SK node underscore uh, game layer. Oops, a little mistype. There we go. SK node HUD layer. And so these nodes are where most of our, dang, I always do that, where most of our um, sprites are going to go and all the background photos we have and things like that, they're going to go within these nodes. And then to show the kind of depth we have, we'll have the sprite, the player sprite, be in the game layer, and then behind it's going to be all the background stuff. And before we stop this, we're going to add NS time intervals. We're going to add DT and NS time interval last update time. Okay, so now that we have our inter or sorry, now that we have our instance variables, we're going to need to add them to the game. So we're going to go into init with size and we're going to take out all this stuff. We're going to, yeah, we'll leave the background color for now, but we'll take out these. Whoops. What we're going to add is BG layer equals SK node node and then self add child BG layer. And we're going to do that with the next two. Okay, now that we added these, we're going to create the scrolling background, because I think that's the first thing you should do when you've created a game, is to have the very back just working out. So we're going to have the SK texture, we'll call it background texture, equals SK texture, texture with image named, and then we're going to say at background, background, um, we'll say i4, because I've made a image, and it's for the iPhone 4 because of the size. So we'll stop that right there. And then we are going to say SK action, move BG equals SK action, move by, oops, did this wrong, SK action move by X. I hate when I press enter and then it fills everything in for me. Oh, actually, I like that about this, but I also hate it. XK action move by X, Y, and then duration. Let's fix this. So the X is going to be background texture dot size dot width times 2, and then the y is going to be 0, because the background is just going to be going left. It's not going to be going anywhere else. Oh, yeah, it's going to be going left. Sorry, guys. Make that a negative. And then the duration is going to be 0, whoa, hey, duration is going to be 0 0.1 times background texture dot size dot width, and we'll go boom. Now that we have the action to move it, we're going to need an action to reset it because once it moves all the way, actually not even all the way, once it's almost done, you'll see the picture ending and there will be nothing else left. So we need another SK action to reset it. And we're going to create this action to be SK action move by X. Yes. And the X is going to be background texture dot size dot width. Oh, hey. My typing is terrible right now. Width times 2, 0, 0. So we're not going to take a lot of time to reset. We just want it every time it's um, gone that far, we want it to move all the way back to where it started instantly. So now that we have it moving and we have it resetting, we want an action that moves it forever. So SK action, move background, 
forever equals sk action repeat action forever and then we're going to have to make this sk action sequence and then we will have two in here we'll say at make sure to get those brackets and the first one is move bg oh hey hate when it does that and the second one is reset you know what, let's make this bg just for consistency there Re move bg reset bg and count is going to be oh why do we have a count don't need a count we're just gonna oh sorry guys repeat action my fault I'm very inconsistent today repeat action forever I'm gonna click away so it doesn't fill anything in and then we'll delete the count this should not error no let's see what this is sorry oh yeah okay so let's see one two brackets we need three over here yes and I spelled something wrong. Man, I'm terrible today. All right, so now we have this action that will move the background forever. All right, now that we have the backgrounds, uh, actions, we're gonna need the actual backgrounds to be added to our BG layer so that they can use this action. So I'm just gonna type this all out and skip over it and you'll see it. Okay guys, so I have added this method right here. Well, not exactly a method, just a little algorithm for moving the background texture and adding it. So what's going to happen is it's going to loop twice and then it's going to create a sprite. It's going to set the scale to 1 because when it sets scale it's just if I set it to 2 it'd make it twice as big as it is and if I set it to 0.5 it'd be half that sort of thing. Set Z position to minus 20. What I'm doing here is I'm setting the Z position which is Basically, if you think about the depth of the game, it's a bunch of different pictures stacked on each other. This picture is going to be at the very bottom of the stack. That's why it's minus 20. And it's kind of an arbitrary number. If I was really, really organized, I'd make it 0 and then just keep going up from there. So the closest thing to the user would be like 100 or something. But I just decided to put it at negative 20 because it is the very back of the entire game. And I set the anchor point, which is the anchor point on the sprite itself. So if the sprite was a square, if the sprite was, let's say, this rectangle, this highlight thing is a sprite, this CG point zero would put the anchor point right in the center. Or I'm not exactly sure. I don't, don't take that for uh, exactly what it is. It's either the center or the center bottom when you set the CG point zero. But all I know is... I set it to zero and that allows it to move across the screen the way I want it. And I set the position to CG point make I times sprite size width. So I is zero for the first one, so it sets the first sprite of the background to be right at the start of the screen and that scrolls through it. And then it sets the next sprite to be twice as far so they don't overlap at all. They're just connected right at the ends. And then I have this sprite run the action move background forever. So it's going to start running that action on itself and we're going to add it to the background layer. So let's see if this runs. I mean it should, but I'm known to make mistakes and I am very tired. Ah, okay. Totally my fault guys. So you're seeing it move across and it's these big X's. <laughs> Those are not my background. Um, as you can see here, air loading image resource background i4. That's because I haven't put the image in our game. All we have is this stupid spaceship. So I'm going to get the image from my files and then I'll run it again. All right, guys. So I just put my background I4. And I just said I4 for the size. It's 1080. And um, it's running pretty well. As you can see, we've got this little skyline scrolling in the background. And if you wanted to speed up or slow down your scrolling, you just go over here and you just change the duration of which your move BG is. And right now the duration is 0.1 times the size. So if I said 0.5 times the size, this is uh, probably going to be a bit faster. Actually, sorry, a bit slower. Because the longer the duration, the slower it's going to go. 
yeah, as you can see now it's crawling by very slowly. And if we change it to 0 0.01, we're going to get much faster. There we go. Now it's speeding up. So now if you had maybe a difficulty for your game that rose as the uh, game progressed slowly, your screen would get faster and faster and faster. And as you can see, I've got, I mean, I'm not the greatest artist, so I just did this as quick as I could, and I've got a little inconsistency right there, but that's fine for this. So thanks for watching this. Um, I hope it isn't too long. I'll try and keep them as short as possible, but game programming is not the easiest, and I just want to make it as easy as possible by going through every step. So if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. I know I haven't answered many lately. I've been very busy, but I'll do my best, and thanks for watching.